To thee we come, O Lord our God. Sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. For your penance, for the next three nights to remember not only saying your morning prayer and devotion as well as the evening which is actually part of this week's uh, parish bulletin but also to take one of the three readings to reread and to reflect that the Holy Spirit may give you more wisdom counsel understanding and knowledge and now let us recite the second act of confession I confess to Almighty God one in the Holy Trinity in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary all the Saints in you my brothers and sisters that I have sinned in thought word and deed by my fault by my fault by my own great fault I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, we are shamed face, like our kings, our princes, and our fathers, for having sinned against you. With yours, O Lord, our God, our compassion and forgiveness, yet we rebel against you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ, you gave repentance and forgiveness to your people. 
May we be ever conscious of your love and thankful for your mercy. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Jimmy, will you please proclaim the word? A reading from Isaiah the prophet. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob. But you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me sweet cane with money, or satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins. You have worried me with your inequities. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual, when we present our petition before you, we rely not on your just deeds, but on your great mercy. O Lord, hear. O Lord, pardon. O Lord, be attentive and act without delay for your own sake. O my God, because the city and your people bear your name. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as surely as God is faithful, the word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we preach among you, Sylvanius and Timothy, and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why we utter the amen through him to the glory of God. But it is God who established us with you in Christ and has commissioned us. He has put his seal upon us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You must know, my brothers, that through forgiveness of sins, is being proclaimed to you. In him, every believer is justified. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to who Saint Mark. And when he, Jesus, returned to Calphurnium, after some days it was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even a, about the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. 
Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this man speak thus? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question thus in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, take up your pallet and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your pallet and go home. And he rose and immediately took up the pallet and went out before them all, so that they were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus. manifested the power of God to the sick when he stood up in his synagogue in Nazareth he proclaimed the words that God had given him the power to heal the sick to heal the brokenhearted and to preach the good news 
of which we hear whenever we partake of the Word of God. You know, some would think that people fall over themselves in Jesus' time to be with him. Do you know he was actually kicked out of Nazareth by the citizens of Nazareth? We read in, in Luke, and they rose up and drove him out. And it even went to the point that they were going to throw him off the cliff. But we read that in their midst, he went away. And so his boyhood town of Nazareth, when he began his ministry, he went to a new home in Calphurnium. But you know, Jesus was not always popular. Not only was he thrown out of Nazareth, but there were many people who did not like him in Calphurnium. And I think a lot of it has to do with, with faith. It has to do with our own faith. Paul says that when it comes to that which comes from God, it is neither yes or no, but it is always yes. St. John was to comment on this in the last book of the Bible in the Revelation when he received the vision and he heard the words of the glorified Christ. And in those words, Jesus spoke. He said, I wish you would either be hot or cold. Yes or no. But he says, you're lukewarm. And he says, because of this attitude, I spew you out of my mouth. When it comes to following Christ, my brothers and sisters, though we all fall short of the grace of God, we read and we believe in our faith that we have been called. And that Jesus has set his seal on us. You know, in the last reading from the Gospel of John, we recite these words. He was in the world, and the world came through him, but the world did not know him. He came to his own, but his own people did not accept him. Today we talk of another miracle. Last week was the miracle of the curing of the leper. Today we read of the clearing of the healing and the cleansing of the paralytic. In Jesus' day, there was no cure for leprosy. There was no cure for being paralyzed. But when it comes to leprosy, there has been advancements in medicine. But there are still those who are crippled. And being given the power of God, Jesus was able, in my faith, in my belief, that Jesus cured the blind, the deaf, the crippled, the lepers, and what was remarkable about his ministry is that there were instances where he actually brought the dead back to life. Do you believe this? Yes or no? Because by answering that question, you basically are answering according to your faith. No, each and every single reading from the Word of God, there are lessons to be learned and applied to everyday living. There was first of all the paralytic who believed in his faith that Jesus could heal him. I'm sure 
that he exhausted every other possible way of being cured. Another lesson to be learned is the determination of his friends. There was no way that that paralytic was able to, to see Jesus at his home. He did not have the mobility, but rather he had friends that carried that pallet. So we talk of not only the faith of the paralytic, but we talked of the faith of his friends. And they were so determined and so fortified that when they came to the crowd that had gathered around Jesus' home and saw there was no way that they were going to be able to break through the crowd, what did they do? They literally took the roof off of Jesus' house and they lowered their friend so that he could receive the blessings of Jesus. You know, even in today's world, there are a lot of skeptics. There's a lot of agnostics. And there are a lot of atheists who say there is no God. I have no need for God. I'm not sure if there is a God. But I think every single one of us that have been baptized has to ask ourselves that question which is the foundation of our faith. Even when Jesus went to see Lazarus, who was in the tomb for four days, his, his sister, Lazarus' sister, said, you know, Lord, if you would have been here, I know my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. And Jesus made the famous, I am. I am the resurrection and the life. But after saying that, he asks her, do you believe? Belief is important. Paul says that, to have that kind of belief, to have that kind of faith, it is not in what we see, but rather what we hold dear to our hearts. You know, when we look in Jesus' time of sickness and illness, it was also always associated with sin. There is that one story where his disciples see that blind man and they ask Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned? Was it this man or his parents? You know, those who were skeptical in Jesus' time, the learned, the religious leaders, instead of believing and having trust in God, they put all their faith on a written law. That's blasphemous to cure on the Sabbath. It's blasphemous to forgive one sin. But in our own faith, what was the mode by which your sins, my sins are forgiven? It's above the tabernacle. So, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. You know, in the day of Jesus, there was a daily sacrifice of animals. But Paul writes in the Hebrews, that he, Jesus, offered the perfect sacrifice once and for all. It is through the power and through the wisdom that we, being sealed, 
find our mode of forgiveness. What is easier, Jesus asked the religious elders of his time, what's easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Anybody could say that. Or rise up, take up your pallet and walk. And Jesus says, but that you may know that the Son of God has authority on earth to forgive. What did he say to the para paralytic individual? He says, I say to you, rise up, take your pallet and go home. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, faith is defined by St. Paul in his letter to the Hebrews. He says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. In today's gospel story, we see faith, forgiveness, and healing that comes together. A final thought. I'm sure that we've all heard the adage, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And to you, my dear brothers and sisters, let us take the example of the friends who had such fortitude and faith that they would do anything to bring another unto our blessed Lord, just as we are called to serve in the community. Whether it be a kind word, a telephone call, a card, or a visitation. And so the story of the paralytic is a story not only for the people in Jesus' day, but it is a story for each and every single one of us. For when we are called to help one another, when we are called upon the, to be the bearers of the pallets of suffering of others, then we truly see that Christ is in that healing. Christ is in our faith, and through it, we experience him in our lives. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father, the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Please be seated.
celebrate on earth, intercede for us in heaven through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day, amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, accept these gifts from a people dedicated to you and grant us your forgiveness. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. To the Lord our God. It is right to give him and Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. You who give us this season of anticipation that takes us from the joyful of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting as we prepare to abstain from worldly trappings open our hearts and minds to a spirit of true contrition of loving you and giving you reverence therefore we he joined the state with the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating on CV singly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our Prime Bishop, and Paul, our Bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. May we pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us pray for peace within our world, in Ukraine as well as in the Middle East. May we in humble prayer pray for all abused and neglected children as well as all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence both here and abroad. Let us pray for all those who serve in our armed forces that God would protect all of them return them safely to their families. And Father, remember all who are present here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty, from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and magnum host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence,
us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may, be, may we be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Oh, forever and ever, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment and condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive your this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. <clears throat> through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with you. God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Now before I distribute Holy Communion, let those of you who will not or cannot receive the Blessed Eucharist offer this act of spiritual communion. Let us pray, most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and my God. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, receive the body and the blood of Christ. St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. 
The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Spirit. Right. 